Okay, we're very, very privileged to have an opportunity to speak to Shea Huang, who is the founder of Boxed. It's a business that started in a garage. Shea, did you really start in a garage? What does Box do? Uh, so the folks out there saw the pictures of the garage. So it started in my garage about four and a half years ago now uh, in sunny central New Jersey, which is basically the cradle of civilization, as most folks will say. <laughs> um, but uh, we're basically a wholesaler. So we bring wholesale savings. So not just individual packs, but um, the big bulk packs. Uh, and we ship that direct to your door uh, anywhere in the lower 48 states in the U.S. The lower 48 states? The lower 48 states. So no... Alaska or Hawaii uh, just yet. And what size is the business today? What revenues do you do on an annual basis? So in that little tiny garage, uh, we did about $40,000 in revenue um, four plus years ago, that our, our first full year in business. Uh, so we thought we were taking over the world with $40,000 <laughs> and then almost 36 months later, we were already uh, surpassing uh, the $100 million mark. So hundred so, million dollars yeah, in 36 so it months. Was, it was, you know, it was, uh, Quite a torrid uh, experience, and um, and you know I'm I'm lucky to have to have gone through it. How did technology help, and how have you used it? Uh, well, we find ourselves as a technology-enabled retailer, uh, and so uh, we're not going to out-retail the traditional retailers with 100 years of experience. So we have to out-tech them, and so between kind of building our front end and back end and warehouse management software all ourselves, um, so you can have very simple things that would seem normal to me and you, but actually it's quite a tech challenge for a lot of the legacy players, like expiration dates. So even if you buy cookies from us, like you know the expiration date before you even press the buy button. Uh, most retailers in the brick and mortar store on their online sites, they don't even have something as simple as that. So you go from very basic things like that to now robotics and having an in-house robotics lab. Um, it's gotten pretty crazy in 48 months uh, for our company. And the funding behind that? Uh, so we've raised about $160 million uh, to date. Um, so again, from humble beginnings to that, uh, the in numbers 36 are, months. Uh, yeah, about 36, to, now 48 plus months, but um, we're about four and a half years old as a, as a company. That level of growth in that period of time must have been a real challenge for people that work with you, your employees. How do you bring them along with you in order to help them get to the next level, to help you get to the next level? Um, free snacks and beer at the office. So, no, but, no, but like, we're actually the opposite. We actually don't have free beer and everything in the office. Um, but um, what we basically have done is, is show them a way uh, in order to one, uh, make a real change on a huge, huge industry. So uh, folks that work at tech companies, compensation is obviously important, but even more important for most of our folks is the fact that we're trying to go after a really big industry and that it's a, it's a once in a lifetime shift in food retail uh, that we can all be a part of. Uh, so that's one very big one. And then two is actually treating folks well. So between kind of subsidizing education, um, uh, having a wedding benefit, uh, and then also allowing them to go after social, or, uh, uh, social services uh, uh, and, and social change in which they can take a part of, uh, all of that uh, tends to inspire our, our employees to stay. It's um, remarkable. So you've created a family feeling within the workplace for people there. They feel they belong. They feel they're co-creators of the business itself. That's right. So in a lot of ways, uh, my philosophy is that um, I'm actually nothing without our, our, our folks and our people. And so if they all walked out on me tomorrow, um, there would be no podcast because there would be no company. So uh, <laughs> that's my general philosophy. And so uh, I hope it just comes through in my daily interactions and the programs that we run. Uh, to retain those folks. When are we going to see you in South Africa? Uh, so on vacation, hopefully pretty soon, but I haven't <laughs> taken a vacation in a long time. Um, but actually, uh, no distinct plans for international just yet. But what's interesting uh, is actually the Warehouse Club uh, model in the U.S., if you trace the roots all the way back, has a lot of South African roots where um, uh, a cash and carry model was first exported uh, to the East Coast in the U.S., and then which later became uh, the West Coast, and which later became some of the wholesaling behemoths that we have in the U.S. So most folks don't know that, but, um, but uh, a lot of the roots are South African. Fantastic. What a great story. And thank you for spending time with Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Yep. Excellent. There are so many stories like this that come out of the United States. In fact, the world. And in South Africa, we really need to believe in ourselves more and more and more. We are innovators. We have more problems than most countries in the world. And where the problems, the opportunities to solve those problems through innovation. Ben Rasseroka traveled 14 and a half thousand kilometers to hear about Boxed. He's dealing in the Stockdale market. He's going to aggregate the Stockdale market. There's a deal to be made between these two gentlemen. Mm -hmm.